Uh, hi, uh, that's, this is quite nerve-wracking going on after uh, Dr Nick because I dropped out of maths in year nine and the school wrote a letter requesting firmly I might like to consider career options that involve putting pegs in bags. But anyway, um, <laughs> here we are. This, uh, this is exciting for me. I, I get nervous coming into like the, like the fancy, like the state library because I live, I live out at like Sanford. Do you guys know like Debra out there? Yeah, I live out there. Um, and out there I am actually like, a, like, as Paul said, I'm like the sexiest girl out there. Um, <laughs> I don't like to leave Sanford because out there I'm a 10, right? <laughs> So when I come in here, when I come into the inner city of Brisbane where there's like beautiful people, there's like really smart, educated people, the women have bothered to like grow teeth and stuff. Um, <laughs> I, I drop down a bit, I lose a few points. Uh, I, get, I get nervous because I'm not a 10 anymore in Brisbane. I get it, I'm like a 9.8. Um, <laughs> it's, it's um, no, I, I do live out there and I live in a share house. It, it's, quite, it's quite a weird share house though. It's just me and this 61-year-old guy. Um, <laughs> And what we share is his money because he's my dad. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. Ah, oh, stop. <laughs> yeah, get into the arts. Um, I do. Uh, oh, I'm an only child as well. I'm also an only child. And if if you're an only child, you will know this. You know how much it sucks to be an only child. It sucks really hard. It sucks especially hard as an only child when you work out that you're still not the favourite. That's, <laughs> that's, qu that's quite stressful. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not working. It's going to need to be. It's going to need to be turned up. Uh, but um, I do with my dad, and my dad, uh, my parents are divorced, and my dad has just started online dating, right? But my dad doesn't call it online dating, he calls it using the Google machine <laughs> to locate lady friends. <laughs> and his online dating name is like, it's quite good though, I think it's actually quite good for him. It's this, it's Moonlight Walks for Two. <laughs> it's a few laughs, some ladies here might, might know my dad. Uh, <laughs> it's worse at RSLs. Um, and I was like, Dad, how did you come up with Moonlight Walks for Two? Like, that is quite a nice online dating name. I think it's quite romantic. I think it's, like, quite good. Dad goes, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I made up Moonlight Walks for Two because I had hoped it would keep the larger ladies away. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, we all know how much they bloody hate walking, so... <laughs> you can't, that's, not, that's not a reason. Uh, but... I, I sort of told you guys half the story there. I said my dad's online dating, but my dad is not the only person in the family who is online dating. I'm also online dating. Surprise, not you, Cardigan. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> it's a really uh, supportive laughter, thanks. Uh, it's a bit of a sad world, I think, where all this struggles to get a boyfriend. It's 9.8 out of 10. Um, but I do online date, and if you've ever done it, it's like quite addictive. If you've, if you've ever been involved, you get sucked into that world really quickly. And what you do is you go home from work, and you check your messages, and you spend all your time trying to fill in all those boxes on the profile, right, all the little things. One of the hardest boxes to fill in is a box that says hobbies and interests, right? Because I don't have any hobbies or interests at all, at all. You know what I actually do when I get home from work? I get in the bath, I eat a brownie, and I cry. That's what I do. <laughs> I don't know how to make that a hobby or interest. <laughs> um, swimming and cookery. <laughs> Splash. Um, but uh, the, the other thing you have to have is quite a catchy headline, right? You have to have a really catchy headline to get people's attention in the online world. You have to grab them, get them to like marry you and stuff. So uh, on my page, right, my headline, it says this. It says, I like pancakes. Right? I've got that written up the top in very big bold letters. Right now, I've got that up there for two reasons. Reason number one, what? Like, let's think about it. What are what are pancakes? They're a breakfast food, right? So I'm saying, yeah, I eat breakfast. I'm not always at my own house, neither. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Subtle message there. <laughs> Thinkers will be rewarded. Um, <laughs> and the second reason. And the second reason, this is where I think we might get a bit, get a bit iffy, Brisbane, is the second reason is because pancakes contain a substance called gluten, and I'm not that keen on gluten-free people asking me out. <laughs> all right, not a riot, not a walkout, we've got away with it. Okay, all right. Uh, now, I know there's a few gluten-free people here, so I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to offend you, but I'm just saying, 
I just remember a very pleasant time back in the 90s before any of you were born, and... <laughs> you used to be able to have a proper office morning tea. Do you guys remember? Remember before gluten-free people sort of ruined everything? Um... <laughs> Like, if you're here and you're gluten-free, I'm, I'm not mad at you, I don't, I don't hate you, I'm, I'm sure you're very cool, you're, you know, you're at TED, you're fine, you're great, you know, you're not, you're not at home, you know, eating mung beans, but, um, <laughs> thumbs up. But, in the old days, right, you used to be able to have a proper office morning tea. Now, an office morning tea is my favourite thing in the entire world, right? You could go down to meeting room six, because someone had had a baby, well done, Tina, another one, excellent, right, ripper, we all go down, 11.15, you get the email, all that stuff, yes, right? Go down to the meeting room six, and in the old days, there would be a selection of goods, right? There would be Tim Tams, there would be cakes, there would be pancakes, sometimes there would be biscuits, there would be everything, right? Nowadays, thanks to gluten-free people, you go down to meeting room six, you open the door, the only thing that's in there is a fruit platter, and someone says, sorry guys, we're just going to have a fruit platter today, um, because Gary's gluten-free. <laughs> Piss off Gary. Um, <laughs> I really needed a biscuit today, Gary. I've had quite the morning. But uh, Gary's a real person. I'm a bit nervous about talking about this in front of, front of you. This is my hometown. I, I, I do, Gary's a real person, and I do work with him. Uh, <laughs> this doesn't go on the internet, does it? No. Um, and uh, Gary, G Gary's gluten-free, and Gary's annoyingly gluten-free. Gary just doesn't say, oh, can't eat bread. Gary says this, oh, I'm actually wheat intolerant. <laughs> You've really dressed that up, Gary, haven't you? <laughs> you really made your inability to chomp down a loaf of white bread quite the fancy title. <laughs> Gary's, uh, you know, Gary's quite annoying, but Gary is... Uh, <laughs> Just, I've realised Gary's probably going to say this, that's what's happening now. <laughs> but no, I, uh, I, I, he has to fancy it up, he always has to fancy it up, and I feel like fancying up my response to Gary, and he's like, oh, I'm wheat intolerant. I'm like, that's interesting, Gary, because I'm dickhead intolerant, so... <laughs> I get all bloated, um... <laughs> that's terrible, that's terrible. But, uh, I'll finish up just by telling you about my dad. I talk about my dad a lot in my stand-up, and my dad is not a foodie. He's not at all interested in food. He's not like us. He's, <laughs> he's very different. And he's, I asked him, I was like, what's, what's your favourite food, Dad? I want to know, because he he'll eat a, like a burnt chop and love it sick, right? I, and I was like, what do you actually like, you know, other than carcinogenic dead animals? And <laughs> he's, he's, he told me his favourite food. I got it out of him. His actual favourite food is mullet, right? That's his real favourite food. He's like, oh, bloody love mullet. Oh, yum. I'm like, what? why? I'm like, what's, what's so good about mullet? And Dad's like, oh, I love mullet. Because what you don't eat for dinner, you can use as bait. <laughs> You're eating bait for dinner, Dad. That's the cycle there. And I was like, Dad, I'm probably going to mention that on stage. I might mention that at like, some gigs and stuff. And Dad's like, what? Where? Where, where are you going to say that? I was like, I don't know. Like, at the TED thing, I'll probably say it there. And Dad's like, oh, no, 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 no. How, how, many people, how many people are there? And I was like, 100? I don't know, Dad. Could be heaps. Could be 200? Could be more. Dad's like, oh, Jesus Christ. OK. Uh, if you go there and you mention the mullet, the prices will go through the bloody roof. <laughs> uh, my name's Mel. Have a good day. I'll see you later. Bye. Thanks so much. Thank